Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a colored concrete floor. I'm also going to show you how we put the color into the concrete and where we buy the color and how we get it shipped to our house. So first, you know, I got to go get the color and, well, the color shipped to my house. And what I do is I take it over to the concrete plant. Here we are at 5.30 in the morning. And this is how we get the color into the concrete. We just dump these bags into the truck before they batch the concrete into the truck. So if we got 10 yards of concrete going on this truck, we'll put 10 bags of color in there. This is a, this is a charcoal color we're using, so the concrete's going to be pretty black. And that's what these people want. They want a black concrete floor. So this is a typical basement floor in Maine. I mean, we get a lot of frost in Maine. The frost goes down four feet into the ground. So most houses are built on a foundation like this. And this is an eight foot tall foundation. So we're pouring the floor down inside the basement. And the access wasn't very good. It wasn't really backfilled or anything. So that's why we're using a pump truck. And we call this dangle pumping. So the pump operator is just dangling that line and we're putting the concrete right where we need it. It actually makes it pretty easy to pour. You can see the concrete. The concrete's pretty dark. It's a, what's it called? A charcoal gray, or I, I just call it black. It's pretty dark. But we're using a 3,000 PSI concrete mix. It's got a three quarter inch aggregate. It also has fiber mesh in it for reinforcement. When you put color in concrete like this, you know, you want to try to get the slump. The slump is how wet or how dry you pour the concrete. You want to try to get that just the way you want it when you start. You don't really want to have to stop partway in between and add water to the mix. That can slightly change the color of the concrete. So we try to get it right the first time and then we... I got a pretty big crew here today, so I got some extra help. We'll pour in the garage also. That'll be in a different video, but um, we'll pour this whole truck right out before we really start dumping in. This is about a 2,000 square foot basement floor here. Pretty good sized house. I don't know if you can see, but it's also got radiant heat tubing in there, so they're going to heat this floor. It's got two inches of styrofoam under it. That's pretty common for a lot of the floors we do in Maine. Also, it has that radiant heat tubing in it. Just about all of them do now. This floor is just, it's a four inch thick floor. That's pretty normal. Um, other than putting the color into the concrete, and, and stay tuned for the end of the video where I'm going to show you how to order this color, wh where to buy it, and how to get it shipped right to your home in case you want to use some color in your concrete. Uh, that'll be coming up at the end of the video. You, as you can see, we don't pour the concrete much differently or really any differently other than trying to get the slump the same and not add any water to the concrete. But other than that, I mean, for us, pouring it, it's pretty much the same as just pouring a regular concrete floor. Just a different color, that's all. It does get all over your tools and everything too. You gotta make sure you wash them really good after. But you can see Darren's got the end of the hose and he's he's you know kind of dumping the concrete out. We've got a guy behind him puddling the concrete, raking it as level as he can. A couple guys magging edges. I'm making some wet pads, and I call that a wet pad. I'm using my laser. And I'm shooting a wet pad, and we're going to screed off that wet pad. And we're also screeding off the pads the guys are magging around the edges. They're magging those pads to a chalk line. We, we shot grade with a laser and snap the chalk line all the way around the perimeter. That's what we're going by there. You can see Luke's got a screed in his hand. He's going he's gonna to make a what we call a wet pad in the middle there. And we're going to use that wet pad plus the pads on around the edges to screed the floor from and get it level. 
I'm gonna be I'll be using my Vibra screen today from Marshalltown. This is the Shockwave Vibra screen. You'll see here in a second. This thing makes screen concrete really easy. I call this like the Cadillac of Vibra screens. It's just it doesn't get any easier to run than running this shockwave. I mean, it starts on the first pole. It's got a Honda motor. It has very, very little vibration. The throttle is really smooth. You can see how easy it is to screed that floor with that thing. If you've never used one of these before, I mean, and then you've thought about how easy it would be, I would definitely recommend getting one. We... We've kick screed concrete for years. I mean, I've been doing this for 39 years. We still kick screed some floors. But I can definitely say that vibra screeding with this thing is a lot easier than kick screeding. You just need a couple of good puddlers behind you that know how to rake the concrete because I mean, you don't want the concrete to build up too high behind it. You definitely don't want it to get low. So you just want a couple people who know how to rake the concrete and keep it just a tiny bit high behind that screen. Luckily for me, everybody here knows how to do it really well. Everybody you see in the video. That's a 12 foot board on that thing too. So, I mean, they make 14 footers also if you want one a little bit longer. They make shorter ones. You can get that, right? I'll have a link for that down in the description. It'll take you right to Marshalltown's website. If you do, if you buy anything from Marshalltown's website, you know, make sure you use the discount code. They gave me a discount code for you guys. And it's just the letters E-A-C. And that'll save you guys 10% off anything you buy there. So, I mean, that could add up to a ton of money, especially if you're buying color there or like a screed like this. You can see how dark that concrete is. But it doesn't really affect, as far as colored concrete, it doesn't really affect the way we pour anything. We're going to still pour the floor the same way we would a regular colored concrete floor. It's just when the concrete dries, you can see how white those walls are, or light, light gray those walls are. I mean, that's kind of how the floor would be, too. This one's going to be a lot darker than that. We got that first truck dumped out. Now we're on to the second truck. You can see Darren's kind of moving the hose back and forth in about a four to five foot area as he's as he's moving forward. That way the guy puddling behind him can rake it smooth and get it as level as he can to where we need it. I'm making another pad there. That's, I mean, using a laser to pour your floors with, I mean, that's really the only way to do it now, I think. If you, especially if you're wet pad and stuff. I mean, it's just basically a one man, one woman operation when you have a laser. And it's very fast if you know how to use it. We just want to screed down the rest of that first truck before we dump out most of that second truck. That's why we pour it out a little bit, just to get those bays squared off. We'll get we'll get off that first truck, and then we'll get moved on to the second truck. You can see the truck up top of that video. That guy's mixing up a little bit more. That fiber screed, that weighs probably about 40 to 45 pounds. It's pretty light. It's got a nice bar there to pick it up with, so it makes handling it pretty easy. You see the sun's starting to come up pretty good now. We started pouring this thing at about 6.30 this morning. This whole floor, this basement floor, took us about... 45 minutes to pour this floor. 
And as you can see, I got a big crew there, so I did get some extra help here today. Got Abby down there. Abby's my summer help. My daughter's the one shoot, holding the video camera. She's shooting the video. She's usually down there helping too, but it was such a tough spot to put a like a tripod with a camera on it because it wasn't backfilled that I just had, had my daughter hold the video camera and just move, keep moving it around for you guys. So how many of you guys have poured colored concrete? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have, you know, where do you get your color? What brand of color do you use? That would be good to know for the viewers. If you've, you know, and if you've also, if you've thought about pouring colored concrete but haven't, just because you didn't quite know, like, where to get it or how to, how to get it in the concrete, let me know that too. Let me know if this video helps you out. If it does, go ahead down there and smash the like button. That'll also help YouTube get it out to more people so more people can see this and learn from it. We got about two thirds of this basement done now. We're working on this last piece. And as we get down towards the end, you know, some of us will start jumping out that ladder. You see how easy dangle pumping makes this. I mean, it costs $750 to get the pump there. And then in order to fill that hose up, you know, to fill the back hopper up and all the hose in that pump, concrete truck, pump truck, takes about just about a yard of concrete. So you're kind of going to waste about a yard. So there's another 125 bucks or so. So it's just about 900 bucks to pump whenever, you know, for us anyway, whenever we want to pump something. That's what we figure. But I mean, if the if the excavator doesn't get the foundation backfilled and the access isn't very good, and this is obviously the easiest way, and it's also the safest way to get the concrete in there, because we wouldn't we'd be able to get the concrete trucks just close enough to get if he had all his chutes on. His chutes will reach about probably 16 or 18 feet off the back of his truck, and we just about be able to get his last shoot over the top of the wall so that that's not what i call very good access from the back of a concrete truck you see i'm going to shoot my last pad there my last wet pad then i'll get rid of that laser i can take that down see the two guys puzzling behind that straight edge it, they keep pretty busy you want to keep that concrete just about perfect and it just makes it so much easier for the guy running the vibra screen i'm confident if you haven't used one of those i'm confident you'd like it just like just like running almost almost like running a push lawnmower i don't know how else to explain it but Pushing a lawnmower is pretty easy on, on a level surface, and running this thing on a level surface is pretty easy. Not what I'm doing, I'm just watching my two ends, making sure they're both scoring the same, leaving a tiny little bit of a line on each end. You'll be able to tell if it's not leaving a line, you know, if, you're, if it's raising up a little bit and leaving a hump, or if you're digging in a little bit. You'd be able to tell that just by watching both the ends. As long as they both look the same as you're coming down the bay, they're both just touching and leaving a tiny bit of a line. You know your floor's going to be nice and level. And then if you got a good guy both floating behind you, that's going to even help make it a little bit more level. You can see we got another truck backing in there. We're gonna that one's gonna do the garage floor. That video will be coming up a little later on. I just wanted to show you guys, you know, how to pour a colored concrete floor, what the color does to the concrete. This color is again is charcoal, which is basically black. And it makes the concrete this black makes the concrete really dark. It's gonna stay dark when it cures. 
But if you, I mean, if you got to pour colored concrete, you gotta, you gotta do something after the fact, after it's hard, after it's dry, after it's power child, to really enhance the color. So you gotta seal it somehow, either with a an acrylic topical sealer, um, something like Foundation Armors AR350 or AR500. That would really help bring out the color. Or you could put like an epoxy over it with a urethane top coat. Or you could even polish this. Polishing it would really help bring out and enhance the colors in this thing. But if you just leave it plain with no sealer or anything, it's going to look pretty blotchy. And quite honestly, it's probably not really going to look that good. You're kind of wasting your money. A bag of that charcoal color, you know, is pretty expensive. So if you're going to spend that kind of money to put color in it, you might as well make the floor look really good when you're done. Well, I'm just kind of shortening up that bay so I can turn it like that and come right down. That little white thing you see in front of, in front of the vibra screen is a, is a floor drain. We're just going to mag that real quick. Only a tiny little bit of that floor pitched to that floor drain. He didn't want very much the floor to slope to it. Just there and to take up any, you know, any water that might get in the basement as they're building this thing before they get the roof on it. You know, how many of you guys do foundation floors like this inside foundations or are most of you guys pouring just slabs depending on where you live let me know where you live and then if you if there are foundations like this or if they're just slabs i mean probably down south you guys you probably don't do many foundations like this or any like this but this is pretty typical for us pretty common got to get down below the frost line so the frost doesn't move you know, the concrete and doesn't move the house. A foundation like this, to put in the concrete foundation is about $60 a lineal foot. So, I mean, I don't know how many lineal feet are around this thing, probably like 300. So this is probably almost a $20,000 foundation. That doesn't include the garage. But it's a lot of area. I mean, under a house, it adds a lot of storage area if you're going to use it for that. Or you could finish it off, I guess, and it would be a lot of living area. Well, stay tuned. Coming up right at the end, I'm going to show you where to buy this color, how to buy it, and how to save some money on buying it. And then get it shipped free right to your house. That's coming up pretty soon. So we're done with that vibra screed. I'm not going to use that in the garage. The garage has a, a center drain. It's got a trench drain in it. And whenever something has a, a, train, a drain in it where the whole floor pitches to that drain, we always like to screed it by hand just to make sure it's perfectly pitched to the drain. Again, if you guys like this stuff, if you like if you like concrete, if, you, if this video is giving you any value, go ahead down there and hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead down there and hit subscribe too. I come out with a couple videos a week showing you guys how to do concrete, whether it's floors, slabs, pool decks, sidewalks, patios, stamp concrete, concrete repair, all that kind of stuff. So this is how we jump out of this foundation here. We, you know, obviously you got to have a ladder. We work our way into a corner. We get the concrete as perfectly as we can into a small area. I'm gonna put the ladder back down there, and I'll jump out. Then I'll show you how I take my boot marks out here. Going, okay, finish bolt floating that one little piece first. That bull float with the tilt head on it makes bull floating so easy in small areas like that. 
you can see the guys are starting to pour the garage already and I had to take a little bit of concrete out so I just put some filled that come along up take a little bit more out so Eric's gonna grab that and dump that out I'm using my mag to smoothen that around my boots Pass me the ladder. I'm going to mag out whatever I can right there, and then I still have to take out marks that the ladder is going to leave. How am I going to do that? Yeah, you can see that's how we do it. We just use the end of a come along and we slightly tamp that. Hey, everybody, Mike here. So, look, I just wanted to show you where to buy this integral color in case you do want to add color to your concrete. So this is where you go. You can go to marshalltown.com and it'll bring you to their homepage here. And what you do is you click on product, concrete, and then it brings up all these things you can buy off their website. So what I do is you go to decorative concrete and under their decorative concrete tab, you know, you can get all kinds of stuff here. But if you want to buy the color to go in the concrete like what we do, you come down here to the Unimix Integral Concrete Color. Click on that. It brings you here. And you click on that tab right there. And it shows you all the colors they have here. So you can order all these colors right from marshalltown.com. And they'll ship them right to your house. So they have this umpteen different colors here to pick from. There's all kinds of different colors. But what I suggest is, you know, for my viewers, Marshalltown gave me a special discount code. So if you guys use the letters EAC, when you go to check out, type that into the discount code and they'll give you 10% off all these prices. So, I mean, that could add up to quite a bit of money depending on how much color you buy. And then you'll get free shipping too. So. This is where you go to get your, your integral color if you don't have, you know, some place that's real local to you. Just have Marshalltown ship it right to your home and you'll be, uh, you'll be good to go and you'll be able to just buy, like I said, anything you want there. The ones we use the most, we use Gull Gray a lot, we use Charcoal a lot, uh, we use Mocha Brown a lot. So anyway, there's all, all kinds of different colors here for you guys to pick from. That's where we get it.